Good morning. morning. Welcome to worship today. It's a good day to be the church. Thanks for being here. And it's, it's just wonderful to be together on this crisp, almost May morning. Um, the youth are selling May baskets, as many of you know. Many of you have already picked those up. Um, there's 20 left, so if you did not pre-purchase one, there are still some available. If we sell out, then the youth will make $500 on this, which is half of a registration to get to the youth gathering. So thank you so much for your support on all of this. Um, oh yeah, the, the, there is a Nehemiah assemble, assembly, I can talk, oh, oh. it's only 9.05, I'm in trouble. Um, the Nehemiah assembly is Thursday. I understand you need a ticket, even though it's free. There are tickets back at the Connection Center, so if you want one, please pick one up. This is a grassroots group that started with Lutheran and Methodist pastors that spread to congregations, and folks are now organizing to call for reform in our criminal justice system and our mental health care system. So there's a big rally on Thursday where we're going to start getting organized and start taking it to the next level. I had to bow out um, because of my health issues last year. So I'm not sure exactly where we are in all of this, but I've been told that if I want to jump back in, Thursday's the time. So I have my ticket. There's lots. There's a good stack back there, about 20 or so. So if you want one, um, you're welcome to take one. There's a postcard also with some information about it. Um, I also wrote some things in the newsletter, which you should have received yesterday, um, explaining a little bit more about this group and uh, would really encourage you to come. So hopefully I will see you there. It's at 6.30 on Thursday. <clears throat> the doors open at 6 at the Lancaster Event Center. Um, I also understand that next Sunday is the Lincoln Marathon. So those of you who live on the south side of town, um, you need to make alternate plans to get here or allow extra time. Um, and Maggie is here from the youth group, and she has some things to say about the next big project. You can go up to, a, to the microphone up there. Thanks. representative for the youth group of St. Andrews. Um, as some of you know, we are currently um, fundraising so that we can go to our youth trip in New Orleans next summer in 2020, 2023. And we thank you for all of your fundraising and money that you've given us so far, but we do have another one. And so we, um, are auctioning off a parking spot in the St. Andrews parking lot um, that's customizable um, and personalized for you if you win. Um, that's from J July 1st to December 31st, so you have bragging rights for six months. And this will be uh, available out in the lobby area for until May 28th, so for about a month. So I encourage you to get that parking spot. You get to pick your own spot. It can be anywhere in the parking lot, except under the canopy. <laughs> okay, someone already asked. I said no. Yeah, yeah, I wasn't gonna say. But uh, yeah, otherwise, any other spot is fair game. So thank you again for supporting the youth. It's, it's really quite remarkable. Uh, please stand as you're able, and we will begin our worship. As we dance in the light of the resurrection, we begin our worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Sisters and brothers, let us gather together with glad and generous hearts. For many signs and wonders are being done among us. Let us break bread together and share our lives in common. 
Let us give what we can to all who have needs, so that all people, no matter who they are, may regard us with goodwill. Let us devote ourselves to our prayers and to the gospel. For in this way, God will add to our numbers every day. Friends, inasmuch as God is our shepherd, let us not fear, but confess our sin that God may restore our souls. Holy God, we confess to you and to one another that we have not always followed Christ's example. When we have been abused, we have been abusive in return. When we have gone astray, lead us back into your fold and guard our souls in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, the promise of our faith is that if we entrust ourselves to the one who judges justly, we need not feel threatened, for we will be returned to righteousness. Having been brought back into the safety of God's fold, let us share our peace with one another. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God. I cast my mind to Calvary, where Jesus bled and died for me. I see his wounds, his hands, his feet, my Savior on that cursed tree. His body bound and drenched in tears, they laid him down in Joseph's tomb. The entrance sealed by heavy stone, Messiah still and all alone.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Worthy is Christ, the Lamb who was slain. God, our shepherd, you know your sheep by name and lead us to safety through the valleys of death. Guide us by your voice that we may walk in certainty and security to the joyous feast prepared in your house through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Please greet one another with the word of God's peace. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. I will sing. I will sing. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever, I will sing of the mercies of the Lord. With my mouth will I make known thy faithfulness, thy faithfulness. With my mouth will I make known thy faithfulness to I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord. Today's reading comes from the second chapter of Acts. 
They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Awe came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. Word of God, word of life. Be to God. God. Please read responsible with me, Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. gospel is from the 10th chapter of John. Jesus said, Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes in only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. I'd like to invite the kids to come up for children's time. Oh, okay. Well, she'll be here in a minute then. Okay. Well, I have some questions for you. Do you think you can do it by yourself? I bet you can. Who said to infinity and beyond? Who's this guy? You don't know. You can guess. No, not Woody, it's the other one. Uh, the guy like, um, can you tell me? Well, let's see if Victoria can guess. So what's that guy? Who said to infinity and beyond? Blood. Good. That guy, right? Yes. Yes, Buzz Lightyear. Blood Lightyear. Not, not, not Buzz, Buzz. 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 Okay. Buzz Lightyear. Okay. All right. Here's another one. Some people are worth melting for. Who said that? Uh, no. Nope. Olaf. 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 Good. Olaf. I know Frozen is one of your favorites. 
So I was going to be surprised if you didn't get that one. Okay. Really good. You are really good. Okay. You can. Who said just keep swimming? Elmo. Not Elmo. Just keep swimming. Just keep swimming. She's blue. You don't know? You have a guess? Can you show us? I will show you. The girl that got lost with her family. Yes, that is who it is. It's Dory. Dory. Remember Dory? Yeah. From Nemo? Nemo. Okay. Okay. You, I know you'll get this one. Me want cookie. <laughs> who said that? Elmo. Not Elmo. No, 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 no. But you're close. Cookie Monster. Cookie Monster. Cookie Monster. Okay, I've got one more. This one's hard. Okay, this one's harder. In every job that must be done, there is an element of fun. Who said that? In every job that must be done, there is an element of fun. Not Woody. Who is it? Who is it? Who's that? What? Who is that? Do you know who that is? That's Mary Poppins. Mary Poppins. Mary Poppins. I was about to guess that. Were you going to guess that? I just didn't give you enough time. Okay. So all of these characters have something really important to tell us, right? And we knew what they said because we know, we know them because we, we watch these movies over and over and over again. Wait, right? I can't watch this one. Well, you need to get that one and see it because it's really good. Cookie Monster. Yeah, Cookie Monster. Oh, I just only watch that and that and that and that. Yeah. And Cookie Monster's on what show? Uh, Disney? No. He's on Sesame Street, right? Sesame Street. Rainbow! Rainbow! No, he's on Sesame Street. But we know, we know these because we listen to them and we hear what they have to say, right? Yeah. Cookie Monster. That's right. So the same thing is true for Jesus. Now, do we see Jesus in, in a movie like this? No, we don't, we don't see Jesus like this, but we, hear, but we hear his voice, right? We hear his voice, and what does Jesus tell us to do? We're supposed to love each other. We're supposed to be kind, and we should tell other people about him. Those, this one? That's Dory. That's Dory. Yeah. And, and what was her friend's name? Elmo. Not Elmo. Close, though. It was Nemo. 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 Right? He was the little goldfish, the little clownfish that got lost. Yeah. And Dory helped find him. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what Jesus does to us, too. Dory lost her family. She did lose her family, but she found them again, didn't she? Yeah, she did. She did. And just when we, just like when we get lost, Jesus finds us too, which is always wonderful. Yeah, good. Okay, you ready to pray? Can you sit up, Henry, please? Good job. Okay, we're going to fold our hands, we're going to bow our heads, and we repeat after me, okay? I don't know how to repeat after you. Yes, you do. Fold your hands like this. There you go. Okay, then just say what I say, okay? Dear Jesus, thank you for loving us. Thank you for always finding us. Help us to tell others of your great love. Amen. Good job. Good job. Thanks for coming up today. Thank you, Asher. Glad you came today too, buddy.
today is Good Shepherd Sunday, and it is always the fourth Sunday after Easter, which naturally means that the psalm of the day is going to be Psalm 23. It is the most well-known of the 150 psalms and perhaps the most beloved. It speaks of love and comfort, especially when times are hard. And it speaks the promise that goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. How wonderful to come to church on Sunday and to encounter an old friend. Sometimes Sundays can be a little jarring. You settle down into your pew only to be hit over the head by some familiar, unfamiliar idea or some biblical text that you've never heard of before, much less understand. And you say to yourself, pastor wants me to think? Or perhaps the preacher is a little pushy that day and is peddling an even pushier Bible passage that Jesus wants us to do what? I've never read it that way before. Nope, not today. Today we get to be with this old familiar friend and we may even be transported back to the days of our youth when we first learned this, learned this psalm and perhaps even further, to the days of sheep and shepherds. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Can you remember a time when you did not know this promise? Even if we do not know many scriptures by heart, or we can't find that one particular verse when we want it or need it, we all know this. When I meet with a family to plan for a funeral and I ask them what scripture they want, they almost always say the one about the shepherd. Sometimes they don't even know that it is Psalm 23. They simply know it by the promise of God's love and protection. Well, here we are told about this God who leads us to rest in green pastures and beside still waters. It is this beautiful description that is pastoral and serene. It's restful and reassuring. And sheep may not be very bright as a whole, but they are smart enough to know not to drink from dangerous, swiftly moving rivers or streams. They're also smart enough to trust their shepherd to lead them to the right place so that they can rest and be restored. And even when the sky suddenly turns dark and the clouds gather, life changes in an instant and we find ourselves in the darkest valley when the innocence of childhood and early adulthood fades and we find ourselves staring down the gradually darkening corridor toward the end of life. There to meet us is not the dark abyss of death, but the shepherd. Even then, the rod, the staff, and the strong arms of the shepherd are comforting us. They are reassuring us. Well, not only do families reach out for this psalm at the time of a funeral, but often when a person is dying, they ask for it as well. They ask me to pray it with them. They call out to it like an old friend. And not just because the person knows it by heart and usually better than I do, but it's because it dares to speak the truth about the end of life. This dark valley of the shadowy unknown, the last great adventure, as Peter Pan might say. But even there, even when we take our last breath, we trust that we are not alone. The shepherd is there with us waiting for us. When life makes us wonder if God is there, if God cared, if God knew, it is Psalm 23 that often wraps its comforting arms around us. It is Psalm 23 that reassures us of a God who makes and leads and restores and comforts and prepares and anoints so that in darkness or in light, in life or in death, we trust that we live with God. What a wonderful promise. It is a promise that 
many of us learned in our childhoods, and we hold on to that promise of still waters and green pastures all the days of our life. But wait. A closer look at our old friend may reveal something that we have not seen before. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. That is the way I was taught to say this psalm. Maybe you were too. But a closer look at the Hebrew tells us that there might be a little more to this than what meets the eye. Hebrew, we have learned from Hebrew studies that these words that have been passed down from generation to generation may have more than one way to translate them. Goodness has many nuances in the Hebrew Bible. <clears throat> goodness names all of the benefits of God's presence. Goodness tells us that God is present even in the valley. And it is good for us to know that God stands with us. Now, mercy is hesed. And we know that the prophets love that word. They use it over and over and over again. And it's often translated as steadfast love. Mercy is another good word for hesed. This is the word that describes the kindness and the faithfulness of God. Reminds us of how God is faithful to us even when we are not faithful in return. God always keeps God's promises to us, even when we fall short. And so when we say that goodness and mercy shall follow us, this is what we're saying. But there is a surprise to be found in the word follow. Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. But sometimes the word follow can also be translated as pursue. Goodness and mercy shall pursue me all the days of my life. Pharaoh's chariots pursued the children of Israel to the sea in Exodus. I pursued my enemies and overtook them, saying King David after he won a battle in Psalm 18, 37. Lamentations 4, 19 says our pursuers were swifter than vultures. They chased us on the mountains and they lay in wait for us in the wilderness. The difference between follow and pursue is the energy behind those words. I wake up Lucy in the morning and she follows me to her bowl for fresh water. But in the afternoon when it's dinner time, that cat pursues me. She seeks me out and she sings the song of her people because she has never been fed. <laughs> it's absolutely outrageous to her that I make her wait until the appointed time. She will not leave me alone. She pursues me until I crack open that can of food, even if I make her run down the stairs. The Lord is my shepherd, we say. The shepherd leads us down to quiet, level pasture. The shepherd knows where to find the quiet, restful brook where we can rest and be refreshed. We trust and love this shepherd to always be there for us. But then Jesus tells us in Luke 15 about the shepherd when just one silly sheep left the fold. That shepherd left the 99 out in the wilderness and pursued the one who was lost until it was found. Which seems pretty dumb, unless you're the one. So not only does the good shepherd care for the sheep and love them, the good shepherd pursues those sheep. And not only that, Jesus says, I lay down my life for the sheep. Is there no limit to God's pursuit of us, even unto death? The Reverend Dr. William Willimon, who is now retired, was the former bishop in the United Methodist Church. He was a former professor and the dean of the chapel at the Duke Divinity School. And he tells this story. 
We knew him as a mean old man. He was resentful and bitter. Someone said his bitterness was justified because his beloved wife died giving birth to their one child. And the child died shortly thereafter from complications. He has reason to be bitter, they said in town. He never went to church. He never had anything to do with anyone. And then in his late 60s, they carried him out of his apartment and over to the hospital to die. No one visited. No flowers were sent. He went there to die alone. But there was this nurse. Well, she wasn't actually a nurse yet, just a student. She was in training. And because she was in training, she didn't know everything that they teach you in school about the necessity for detachment, the need to distance yourself from your patients and having boundaries about such things. She befriended the old man. It had been so long since he had friends, he did not know how to act when he had one. And so he told her, go away, leave me alone. She'd just smile and she'd coax him to eat his jello. At night, she'd tuck him in and he'd say, I don't need anybody to help me. And soon he grew so weak that he did not have the strength to resist her kindness. And late at night, after her duties were done, she'd pull up a chair next to him and sit by his bed and she'd sing to him as she held his old gnarled hand. And he looked up at her in the dim lamp lamplight and wondered if he saw the face of that little one who he never got to see grow into an adult. And a tear formed in his eye when she kissed him goodnight. And for the first time in 40, maybe 50 years, he whispered, God bless you. And as she left the room, two others remained, whispering softly in the old man's ear, the last word that he heard before slipping away into that dark valley. The word was, gotcha. And it was whispered in unison by goodness and mercy. Goodness and mercy pursued that old man his whole life. And he never did quite outrun them, and neither can we. We all may wander down crooked paths, bob like debris on some raging river. Doesn't matter. God meets us there anyway, right there, exactly where we are. God has pursued us, God is pursuing us, and God will continue to pursue us all the days of our life, even into the valley of shadow. As the sacred words of Martha and the Vandals remind us, when it comes to the Lord, there's nowhere to run to, baby. There is nowhere to hide. There is no place we can go where the good shepherd is not already there pursuing us, waiting for us, and perhaps waiting to greet us with gotcha. Amen.
Please stand as you are able. <clears throat> we are God's people by baptism into Christ, living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. And let us join our hearts and our minds together in prayer. O oh, Good Shepherd, thank you for pursuing us. Thank you for following us all the days of our lives with goodness and mercy. Thank you for calling us to come and follow you, and thank you for seeking us out when we are lost. You know where we are. We may not know where we are, but you do. And you continue to pursue us, always hoping that we will turn to you and live. We pray, Lord, for that grace to realize that we cannot do it by ourselves and that you are loving and kind and waiting to embrace us, to set us on the right path, that you stick out your hand and invite us to grab on so that we can walk with you in justice and mercy and love all the days of our lives. Thank you for being our good shepherd and for never giving up on us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, Lord God, for your church throughout the world, and we ask a blessing on every faithful heart who gathers in your name. We pray, Lord, that you strengthen us for such a time as this, for you have called us to be your church. You have called us to be your hands and feet and heart in the world. Help us to work together to affect the change that is needed for those most in need. We pray a blessing on the Nehemiah Assembly that will take place this week. Bless the work of the committee that, that has um, brought us to this point. And we pray, Lord, that you would lead us forward, that we can affect some real change in our community and beyond. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you, God, for this beautiful planet. Thank you for this earth that you've entrusted to us. Thank you for spring as it's slowly making its way here. But thank you for the, the beautiful flowers and the green grass and all the lovely signs that are around us that the earth is awakening from its winter slumber. Bless those who suffer with allergies like myself. And we pray that the time of, of growing and budding will be over soon. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the nations of the world, particularly places that are living with injustice or fear or violence. We pray for peace between Ukraine and Russia. We pray for peace in, in Sudan. We pray for peace in Ethiopia for the folks who are suffering there. For those who are living in drought, we ask for rain in the right amount and in the right time. We pray for your Holy Spirit to enter into every faithful heart and even those that are not so faithful, but enter in any way and move your people to live with, in peace and harmony with one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our nation. We pray for those who are suffering and who are recovering from tornadoes. We pray for those who are preparing for hurricanes. We pray for those out west that, who are dealing with flooding and the melting snowpack. Just watch over all who are on harm's way, Lord God. Keep them safe. Help the, the snowpack to melt slowly than what is anticipated. And help those who, who are suffering to find the help that they need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the sick, the sad, and the lonely. 
We pray for those who are grieving and we pray for those who are dying. Be their good shepherd in their hour of need. We pray for those who do not know you, that they too would come to know you as their good shepherd and realize that you have been pursuing them with mercy and goodness. Hear now the names we lift before you who are in special need of your loving care, whether we speak those names out loud or from within our hearts. <clears throat> Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Thank you, Lord God, for the ways that you use us in our community. Thank you for asking us to be your hands and feet and heart in this little corner of the world. Continue to bless our efforts, Lord God, that others will know of your love and mercy and grace because of us. Not that we're pointing our fingers at ourselves, but we seek to point them to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting that you hear us and you will answer us, for we lift these prayers to you in the mighty and amazing name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please stand as you are able. he died our lord jesus took bread he gave thanks and he broke it he gave it to his disciples saying take and eat this is my body which is given for you 
Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks, and he gave it to them all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. This is God's table, and everyone is welcome here. So come, you who have great faith, and you who wish you had more. Come, you who've been here often, and you who've not been for a long time. Come, you who have tried to follow, and you who have fallen short. Come, not because I invite you, but because God desires to meet you here. And for those celebrating at home, please know you are part of this table and part of this meal. This is the body of Christ, given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. The congregation may be seated.
please stand as you are able. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ give us strength for today and hope for tomorrow. Amen. Gracious God, in you we live and move and have our being. With your word and this meal of grace, you have nourished our life together. Strengthen us to show your love and serve the world in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> the God of all who raised Jesus from the dead, bless you by the power of the Holy Spirit to live in the new creation. Amen. to follow the path of righteousness. Have no fear, little flock. Go forth to follow the path of peace. Have no fear, little flock. Go forth to follow the path of service to God and neighbor. Have no fear, little flock. May God's goodness and mercy follow us as we serve the risen Lord. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace. Serve the risen Lord. We go with joy, reaching out, sharing grace. Thanks be to God. There is a rock, there is a God. Cannot be born. 